You go pretty hard in this thing. Hey, what's up guys? We're out here in El Cajon, California at our buddy Dustin's shop, East County Motorsports and East County Trailer Repair. Uh, we're gonna check out the shop, see what he has going on in there, and check out his sweet Ranger. I'm sure you guys are gonna like it. Let's take a look. All right, what's up, brother? What's Thanks for letting on? us come by, oh, man. Yeah, Thank you, dude. Thank you, guys. So, dude, this is the spot, huh? Ooh, you got the you got the banner too, man. Of course. That's hard, man. Of course. Uh, so this is our little hideout in here. So. Oh, uh, nice. This this M3 right here is my car. Um, oh, so this is like the the drift zone. Drift area, yeah. So, so you guys motor, build drift cars? Motorsports side, so East County Motorsports, I started to, uh, so we can build drift cars, yeah. Oh, nice. This is Steven Brown right here, V8 What's Mini up? Slayer. What's up, man? Yeah, how's it going? V8 Mini Slayer. Yeah. Dang, yeah. dude. What the heck? That's crazy, so man. This is a Mini that we've done, rear wheel drive conversion, dropping LS1, the whole deal, so. This thing right here? Yeah. That LS right there is going in here. Yeah. In that thing right yep. there. Yeah. Yep. It's got a Holy Terminator X. So, oh my god. Yeah. Are you ready for this? No, I can't wait. <laughs> Dude, this is like some straight RC car madness right here. Like it's like yeah. the power power to weight ratio is probably gonna have into the drifting, so yeah, you, you know, so you just, see this. This yeah, is gonna happen, man. It's, it's gonna be rad. Gonna be we're gonna we're gonna blow this machine. thing up and yeah. it should be good. Hell yeah, man. So are you guys gonna just like drift like locally, like some fun stuff in this thing or just No, I'm gonna go to Try and get some events, you know. Yeah. There's not much to do down in San Diego as far as drifting, yeah, so we have so to drive. For you guys got to go out. No matter what, we go to Grange or we go to Willow or whatever yeah. we do, we have to drive. So. Yeah, there's a little spot up in uh, Riverside called Adams Motorsport Speedway. Yeah. Right. That, there's a there's like a local night or like kind of like a local night where a lot of local shops cruise out and they they rip, man. Oh, yeah. yeah, they go out there. So that's cool, man. So do you have any experience like drifting and stuff? Or yeah, I've been doing it for a while, but uh, heck yeah, man. In this car, it's gonna be new for this setup. So Dude, yeah, and then the wheelbase too. I mean, like, yeah, it's a small wheelbase. Dude, so. that's crazy, man. We're gonna have to with have that some power, angle on this thing. Yeah. <laughs> Dang, I, I'm excited. Yeah. You guys got to let us know when you guys get this thing going, man. Uh, hopefully, in the next month and a half, two months. Hopefully. Dude, hell yeah, very well, cool. Come check out this customer car for sure. So this is uh, the trailer side of things, huh? Yeah, this is like my little trailer base. Boom, boom, boom. Got a little, you know, four little areas where we can nice. on trailers and do bearing services, brakes. I custom build axles in house. Uh, Dang, dude. That kind of stuff. So you're utilizing every inch of this place right Absolutely. now. That's Absolutely. That's rad. I mean, so we, we usually just do one customer car at a time. Just okay. It takes so long. There's so much involved in it. Dang, you guys, you guys hear that? Fabricators, one car at a time. Yeah, I mean, it's out. that's because we that's just cool. want to get it done and get it out the door. I've, I've learned that with my trailer stuff. It only takes me like two to three days on trailers. It takes us, you know, yeah, five it could, to six months for to, sure. to do this. For know, sure. Basically a year build on a car. Dude, that's rad, Dustin. I didn't even know you fabricated, man. That's awesome. So that's cool. So so this is a customer's car. What's yeah. what's going on with this, this thing? This is a 2004 BMW. Came in here driving full interior bone stock, working AC. So no way. Yeah, desecrated this car, took it apart. Holy Two moly! Chassis in it. Well, it's unibody, but yeah, you know, we've connected all the whole chassis with all the roll cage, um, basically drift spec stuff. Nice man. Um, so what's this guy's plans? 2JZ right here, baby, check this thing out. 2JZ. So this is a Toyota Super Engine that's just gonna be pretty nasty. It should have about a thousand horsepower when we're done with it. Oh my God. Yeah. That is insane. So this guy wants to go out and <laughs> party. He's gonna party hard. Dang. What do you guys think in ETA on this thing? Um, well, we should have it off the paint in about a month. Uh, we're basically just waiting for Condor Speed Shop to send some bushings out to us so we can Put the rear end back together and then we can roll it off the paint. Okay. And then once it comes back from paint, stuff the engine in it and start wiring and plumbing. Nice, so, man. Um, I would I would estimate with, you know, his budget and, you know, getting the money on time and stuff. Yeah. Probably three months. Three, three months? months out, yeah. Right on. When you take on a full build like this, it's a lot to chew, you know what I mean? Yeah. But that's great, man. It's another reason why we try to do one car at a time. For sure. You want to give it with the, the TLC it and, needs. And he came in here not thinking that it was going to be this involved, and I was like, dude, you're building a race car. 
Yeah. <laughs> just know that. Oh yeah, dude. These <laughs> things take time, man. You got to have a lot of patience. Yeah, exactly. That's badass, dude. Well, so so I can't wait to see this thing, man. You guys got to tell us. We got to do some drift days or something. Absolutely. Too many of our guys are in a drifting and rally. Like we got to get everybody out together. I had to take this dude for a ride. Uh, right. he's, he's like a, a, a producer, and he don't know what's going on. So we're about to scare his ass. <laughs> There's the bad girl right there, huh? That's my baby. This is a five-year build for me. Um, five-year build? Yeah, because I, I honestly did not do a whole lot of the fabrication and the work on this truck. Um, it started with Garrett Peterson from Corrosive Designs. Oh, okay. You guys know Garrett? Yeah, Garrett's uh, badass, man. Yeah, so he, it was, he was up in Ramona um, when I brought this Ranger to him, and uh, we just started plugging away. I, I had small expectations, and it kind of just snowballed into a full build. Did you have like experience with any like pre-runners and stuff like that and off-roading prior I, to this? I've actually been involved with uh, dirt bikes on okay. the dirt bike side of the desert stuff. Okay. Um, but once I was injured enough, just like everything, progression, age, cage. With age comes a cage. <laughs> yeah. An ancient Chinese proverb. Daniel-san. Daniel-san. What? Come here. With age comes a cage. <laughs> no, dude, it's true, man. It's I've, true, man. I've, I've busted up some bones, man, over the years, you know? But, I mean, yeah, that's, that's just kind of what it is, right? Yeah. Um, so, so then just kind of moved on to that stuff. But, I mean, riding a dirt bike, any kind of dirt motorsports gives you a different feel. So when you're going into it... Well, you, I mean, you, always from a, from a, a child, I loved off-road and Rob Gordon. I mean... Of course, dude. <laughs> the king. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Robbie Gordon is king, bro. I was out in the mobile when he had the, the blue trophy truck mm -hmm. with the stripes on the side and he was jumping the back of Olds and me and my dad were standing right there and like literally it was, that was it. That's all I needed. Yeah, that's the that's the OG Menard trophy truck, uh -huh. right? Yeah. yeah, dude, that truck is legendary, man. Hopefully we can find some shots of that thing and can check it out. <laughs> was there a few times Thanksgiving when Robbie came through mm -hmm. and man seeing a trophy truck kind of come through the way he did it, I think it was like inspiring to like all of us kids. everyone <laughs> it was just yeah to everybody trophy truck dreams man I think yeah. that's even a hashtag right because we all were like kids and just like dude we just want to be like Robbie Gordon I just want to go fast like Robbie yeah. <laughs> like did Robbie win the race cool if he didn't cool but is he out here having a good time that's what Absolutely. it's all about. So Garrett from Corrosive Designs yeah, had this thing. So we started on Ramona. We basically did the chassis out there and we did the engine swap. There's an LS engine swap in it. Oh, nice. Um, and then we, I brought it back down to town, to down to El Cajon where I live. Um, and then I brought it over to uh, basically Kevin's shop. Okay, uh, Kevin Tim, QMS. Tim's shop, you mm -hmm. know, Tim Nightcar, TV Metalworks, and mm -hmm. Exotic Motorsports to mm -hmm. kind of share a shop with Blake. and. Those guys, so they kind of uh, pushed it to the end for me. They built the custom exhaust. Hell yeah! It, wired it. And you know what? That those steps take so long. Those were the long steps. I don't sure. think people understand. Like, oh, cool! I got the motor, the fabrications done. You're not even close. There's so, so much more to go. Of tedious little dollar amounts. All the little fittings and little jabs at you. Ugh, ugh. It's like, Jeez, right? man. No, I mean, and then <laughs> that that in itself ends up being thousands and thousands. When you guys are making those lists of all the parts, you know, you're like, you know, you're kind of checking off the suspension. Oh, I got my kings. Oh, I got my, I got my beams. I got everything else. But when it comes to all those little specific fittings, dude. Yeah, and then, and then you got to take the truck back apart. Yeah and then you paint everything, then you start putting it all back together and you're like, no, I'm gonna get this perfect grade eight ball yeah. for this or this or this. Exactly, oh, the bolts, so dude. Oh my God. The, the good news is, it is there. over, you made it's it. There. Again, I don't think people understand how much 
is involved with building a truck. And it sounds cheesy going through that hustle when you're waiting and you're a year into it, two years, three years. Never heard it. It never heard it, never <laughs> driven it, and you're just, and you know, you're telling your, your lady or your family, you're just like, it's gonna happen. You sound like a crazy person, dude. <laughs> All and this money that just... Look, Arshia's over there laughing. Look at her. Arshia, what's your comment on this? What do you think? You've been almost done for for a while. Almost done for I a while. that's a common thing, right? It's just, just a couple more things and it's... Just five more thousand. Yeah. And then just five more thousand. I thought that, yeah, it was like a couple of thousands ago. <laughs> <laughs> just like a few sets of five thousands ago, man. Yeah. Hey, you know? But it takes a good woman, though, to back you up. That's true. That's yeah. true, right? Oh, she's like, oh, thank you. <laughs> so, no, it's true, right? And, and my wife backing me up on this and my business and my life, I definitely wouldn't be here if it wasn't for her. It's crazy, man. I mean, like, like I said, I don't mean to be stressing it so much, but it takes so much time and dedication to build these things. We get DMs from people from all over the United States, even all over the world sometimes that are just like, hey, I wanna get started on a truck. You know, what do I gotta do? Like the first step is like, of course, laying out a financial plan and everything, but patience, because you know, if you don't know what you're doing and you don't have the right fabricators or the right people behind you, like he said, he got it into the shop with Blake and then, and that's when he finally got past that point. You start getting into all the little tedious things, which I didn't know what to do with the fuel system, exactly how it should be ran and like the cooling system to make it proper. You know, yeah. Like things like that. There's it's crazy. Things that, you know, you just, I could throw the engine in there, sure, and get it centered and make some mounts. That's just easy, but the hard part's making it right. Well, I'm stoked for you, man. Let's check this front end out. So Garrett built the front end. Yeah. Uh, beams, you know, yes. I know Garrett, it, that's his expertise in Absolutely. that thing, man. Just, just Got the, the homies standard, from Shreddy, you know, Shreddy right there. Four wheel Woo. drive, you know, hubs at the end, standard okay. beams. Equal For sure. So nice. His, his crossover steering. Okay. Just kind of stock, stock stuff, really, just stock brakes. Yeah. Whatever makes it stop, dude. Not, not to the Ranger, though, to the, to the F-150. Yeah, yeah. Stock F-150 brakes. So you're you so you're running the F-150 brakes? Yeah, it's all F-150 stuff. Nice, man. So how's this front end treating you, dude? Good. Yeah, how do you like it in like the big holes? Because I know I've I've seen some videos of you, man. You go pretty hard in this thing. since 2011. Oh, no way. Uh-huh, lots of best in the desert. I'm actually doing District 38 right now on the uh, Yamaha White Z. I'm used to putting my foot to the floor, you know, and I'm really good at breaking parts. <laughs> <laughs> the desert is not nice to us, man. <laughs> this thing came out so clean, just everything works out very well. So you got the foxes on this thing? Yep, they're right nice. here in El Cajon. Um, shout out to my boy Mike Toombs, works at Fox, hooks it up. Hell yeah, dude. Again, it seems like the beams are kind of the way to go when you want the travel and you don't want to cut too much into the, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, into you the know, dash. I don't want to like pull through the firewall on this project, so you know, it's, yeah. it's pulled back as far as you could go, but that's about it. Are you guys down? You guys want to pull the hood off, or is? Oh, absolutely. You sure? Yeah. Okay, maybe. Yeah, let's pull it off, man. There we go. Nice and strong, dude. Where'd you guys take this thing last? Um, I think I was out at uh, Plaster City for the last District 38 race. Oh, you just took it out just to go cruise around? Yeah. Took right my on. cousin out for a ride. How was that? He shit his pants. Yeah. <laughs> you got the Depends on, <laughs> on lock ready to go? Yeah, dude. I mean, yeah. it, it's always funny, like, taking somebody through some bumps that have never been well, yeah, through some never, bumps, right? never been in a vehicle that's four links, let alone the horsepower it has. So, yeah, he, he was tripping. Dang, dude, yeah, that is freaking awesome. I think that's probably one of my favorite things to do is like take somebody for a ride after they've ridden in a stock truck or something and you take them through like the desert or anything and you kind of, you know, you're approaching that first big bump where you know it's gonna bottom out oh, and you yeah. just see them just, oh, you I got a funny story moment. about that one. 
the, the owner of that, that drift car we're building. He's yeah. never even seen dunes before. He's from Florida, so I took him out to Glamis. No way. He was tripping. He thought he was a Mars dude. <laughs> That's awesome, yeah. man. Yeah, no, That's so good. sick. It was pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, you're running the, the light bar up here too, huh? Right yeah. behind the mesh kind of hood. That's mm -hmm. cool. And, and these are some strobes. Nice. I love the way this is set up, dude. It looks so clean, so functional. It's like the, the, the classic I-beam setup has been like this for a while yeah. and it just works. Super OG. It works. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Badass, dude. Well, thanks for letting us take a look at it, man. And then who who built the motor or what do you... That's, uh, uh, that's a turnkey performance. Oh, okay. LS1. Uh, nice. It's their, it's their 450 package. So that's 450 at their at the flywheel. So okay. I don't know. You take nice. Off, you take off like 100 horsepower for the wheels. Yeah, dude. I mean, even with the with the 37s and uh, these are 35. Oh, these are 35s. Oh, these are 35s. My bad. I got I got some uh, projects right there. I got some Robbie sitting right there. Oh, dude, with 35s and a motor like that. Oh my Rips gosh. Hard, yeah. Dude, yeah. heck yeah. But yeah, I'm gonna switch up the 37s in a couple of days actually when I get my rings back from powder coats. What were the travel numbers on this thing? I think he strapped it at 22 in the front. Okay. And uh, 28 in the rear. 22 in the front and 22, 28 in the rear. Yeah. Nice, dude. It's got a little more, but it, you know, you don't. Yeah, you gotta keep anymore. it good. You wanna hop inside? Dang, dude. Look at this, baby. Yeah. Turn a light, you want me to turn a light on? Yeah, sure, go for it, man. Got the light in here. So I made it a three-seater, but it's a tiny little seat, but I have a six-year-old daughter, so she'll oh, be able right to on. fit back there for a while. That's cool, man. You know, and when she doesn't fit back there, she'll have her own little razor or whatever, so. Heck yeah, how does she like this thing? She drives like this. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's too loud, huh? <laughs> but she likes it. That's you know, cool, man. That's uh, awesome. So yeah, we're running the, the Holly. Fuel injection, um, switch pros is up here. So, I mean, pretty much that's about it. It's that's super, it. super it makes clean. It super simple and right. so, super user friendly. Right, right. And then everything's off the display screen right here, right? Yeah, yeah. It's nice. So, just pop it on and. That's rad. Gives you your, uh, your parameters and everything. Heck yeah, dude. That's so cool. I love this, dude. You know, uh, this has been kind of like the, a lot of the options that people have been doing lately. Yeah. I know that some people do run like the OG gauges, which is pretty cool. Right. But this is so awesome. Like you said, it just kind of makes life easier, right? It's just plug and play too. Yeah, that's rad. You know, there's no, no, there's no guesswork. Yeah, dude. You, you got just big plug and handle. play. <laughs> what transmission are you running in this so thing? It's a turbo 400. Turbo 400. Yeah. Right on. Very With cool. all the Wanco internals, he, he did it all for me. So. Heck yeah, man. That's rad. How's that thing been treating you? Perfect. Good? Perfect. Literally, yeah. it doesn't get over like 180 degrees ever. Oh, nice, man. Yeah, I got the two big CBR coolers back there. Those are both, these are both training coolers. Okay. Right here. So, nice, yeah, dude. Yeah, it keeps it nice and cool. That definitely keeps it cool. Nice. Well, yeah, since we're back here, man, let's check out the back of this baby. Yeah, so, I mean, this is about the best I could do at the time. Yeah. I, I bought this rear end back when I first started the truck, so. Okay. It was still a flange nine inch housing, but. Well, hell yeah, does it work? It's got as about as much as I could do to it. Strange axles and all that stuff. Well, there it you works, go. It works until the wheel comes off. <laughs> and then it breaks through the fender oh, and takes shit. everything with it. Yeah, that's right. That happened to you in uh, happened like a month ago. So In Super. Blake was behind me. I launched a little too hard and snap. Oh, oh shit. by me with Blake chasing it. it oh, funny. my God, dude. <laughs> so I'm out here just chilling. Uh, yeah, I totally just broke the axle. Ripped off the brake flange and snapped that Dutchman axle. The uh, tire went flying by me into the desert with Wilkie chasing it. It was actually kind of funny. I was laughing until I got out of the truck and I wasn't laughing. So I'm assuming next step on the rear end is gonna be like a full floater or something? Floater, yeah. Full floater. Yeah, I'll have a floater in it by next season. Right on, dude. Little by little, as long little as you're out there. Little by little, yeah, that's a five thousand dollar expense. Jesus. I just wanted to make sure everything was dialed and good. I broke it a couple times. And you want to drive, dude? Yeah. yeah. Well, that you want, too. You want to drive, yeah. man? Have you gone through any like shock tuning specialist on this thing yet? Not or? yet. Not yet. Just kind of no, running I, it. I've just kind of used my my experience with my buddies a little. Did a couple little turns. Uh, turns here and there. We made it a little better, but I definitely do want to. Hook up with somebody and the shock mad scientist, man. <sighs> nice, man. Well, dude, this is a solid rear end. You got a ton of up travel, too. I'm seeing you're using it right there, too. Oh, yeah. And not even bodying me out all the way, I guess, from the last time. I'm a, I'm yeah. a fan of up travel. 
Oh, up travel is key, right? Up travel. For what we do, for our parts of the desert and how, how we go through whoops and G outs and stuff like that, you gotta have it. And I love that this thing's street legal, dude. <laughs> yeah. Street, hold on. Yeah, I street to, uh, legal. <laughs> Slip somebody a couple hundred bucks. I mean, just kidding. We don't do stuff like that. What are we talking about? Never, ever, you know? Well, dude, this is bad. And then you got the sway bar running right here. So no through wheel motion, but you can handle some turns in the desert pretty hard. You know your boy likes to drift. There you go, man. It's necessary, dude. It's necessary. Yeah. You know, when you get that sway bar on there, man, you could you could pitch that thing, huh? Yeah. Yeah, you could really get sideways, bro. It's incredible. And you really feel it on the street. To so believe it or not, when you turn on the street this thing, it's like... Oh heck yeah! Turns. There's no, there's no roll. There's no body there's roll. roll at, you know? What fuel cell do you own here? A Jazz or? Just some Speedway Motorsports. Right on. The internet, 32 gallons. 32 gallons. Yeah. Okay, right on. And then what's your MPG in this thing? Do you know yet? No. <laughs> Five, six. Don't know. Don't care. How's that? Dude. Dude. Dustin's gonna start this thing up. He's gonna take it for a quick little rip around the uh, industrial park. It's all quiet, no one's here. It's pretty mellow. Pretty stoked to hear how this thing sounds. <laughs> Damn, dude. Want to go again? Nelson always tells me, go in the car, bro. And I'm like, okay, maybe next time. I don't know. This thing's rad. That thing sounds pissed. Dude, oh my God. Okay. Neighbors don't trip, huh? Nope. No way. No, we do that all the time. You guys have wonderful neighbors. Yeah, that's what he said. He's like, dude, the neighbors are chilled. That's insane. <laughs> He's like, we do it all the time. <laughs> Damn. Donuts in the backyard. Where'd he go? Do you pull it back in? Yeah, we pull it back in. So where are we going now? Behind the building or what? Dude, that was rad, man. That was crazy, man. Hey. Hey, my love. Well, that was wild. Thanks, Justin. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much, man. Yes, sir. Thank you, guys, so Thank much you. for letting us yeah. cruise by. So, yeah, guys, look out for Dustin. We're going to be filming with this dude throughout this, the, this next year. We're going to be capturing some stuff. We're going to be working on some drift stuff with them, too. Um, man, this truck is bad. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as we did. Take it easy, guys. So if uh, you like what you just saw, make sure you comment, like, and subscribe so we can keep doing what we're doing and bring you guys awesome content. Now, if you'll excuse me, 
I'm gonna take this expensive ass shock, go put it on the shelf in my garage, so it can sit there for the next three years. <laughs> Thank uh you. -huh.